Super Mario Maker 2. Seven other great ideas that um, I wish Nintendo would also add to Mario Maker 2, which I also think will make a great benefit to it. It'd be so awesome if at least, even in a future update, if one of these can be implemented. You never know what Nintendo may surprise you with next. So um, starting with uh, number one. Screen and tiles with uh, more flexibility. I know Nintendo said that there's going to be some way where if you um, design a perfectly um, set roll of um, tiles that align to the end borders of the screen, it will actually center the screen when Mario um, is in that part of the map, maybe when he comes up through a drain pipe or a door. This right here is just an example of one of my 2D computer games that I was making a long time ago. I decided to use this as an example, as one of the great ideas I would like to see Nintendo would also add this. Now that's great that Nintendo's already um, doing something like this, but let's just say now, let me just fill this one up for an example. This right, this little donut circle thing here is actually where the, um, the object is that the camera follows. That would be where Super Mario is for now. So let's just say I filled up this screen on this demo here, and um, it looks like this, right? So basically, when you do something like this, I was told it's gonna the screen's gonna stay centered on it. Well, these these two also would have to be covered up. So let's just. This is what I'm thinking. It'd be cool if Nintendo did something like this. Let's say, um, I select a green one. This is just from my game, so I'm giving away this amazing idea. And I put, uh, um, end screen tile over here, let's just say. So when I, if I put it here, um, and I, I click it on the map, sorry, I have to put it on the other layer. So now what happens is, screen stops moving that way. Now if the object passes the tile, it will then center back on, but if it goes past here, then it goes back. So this way I can control things better and hide more secrets that way. Now if I don't want the screen to go up, it's the same thing. I do it for the other way. I put one over here, and now, so then it stops. And you can do it for all the other ends. This is also, I think, a great way um, for um, doing even this one. This one's now called um, this one's called a permanent end tile. This would be great if Mario Maker had one of these. So that way, you can from the upper part of the map. Oops, wrong um, map. <laughs> let me uh, do that. Let me fix that. Basically, um, with um, you can have the lighter end tile maps, right? So, for example, this could be a great way for Mario to then be on the map, let's say at an upper part, and if you want to, something like this was also done in Yoshi's Island Super Mario 2, and if he falls down here, not only will the screen not move back towards him, but he'll just fall off and die from there. And only where the um, tile is, it will work. So if it's way off the map, then that's not activated. Of course, this requires a more huge learning curve for people who have a more advanced logical idea of how to make levels like this. Of course, this can be disastrous if you mess it up and then you don't put these um, tiles in the right places. So, um, I know Nintendo can be reserved like that. Like, let's say, for example, this should be here. The minimum it should go out is here. But if I bring it closer, then it kind of looks a little bit more confusing like that. So basically, it should be there. Oops. Once again, I put on the wrong map. Sorry there. And that's what holds the screen to place. So you must be wondering, well, what's the big deal about this? Well, suppose you want the screen to be just a little bit bigger. Suppose you want the screen to... Um, for example, the right here, and um, you want it to be even longer, the map. So let's say you want it, it to be this or even a little higher. So let's say it's here instead. So um, that way, 
when it gets uh, fixed now. Um, basically, now you can have more control over how the screen modes work. So, oops, once again I messed up there. <laughs> so basically, now the screen will stop from here then to there. So you have more um, control over that. Now that was a big secret I just released. That was a great uh, 2D ID, I think, for um, end screen tile maps. Also, you'll also see things like this in the Mega Man X games. Now on to the next idea. Um, how about um, split screen mode on local multiplayer co-op? Um, as you can see on this little demo, the screen is uh, split right there. Um, this would be a great idea. Let's just say, let's just say when all the players are all together, the screen stretches into one big screen and all players share the same screen, but if one pushes away off the screen, then the screen splits in two, one shrinks out while the other grows in, and then it's like split screen co-op. This would also be a great idea if one person was on the upper part of the map and the other person falls off the screen that they're sharing, and then the screen splits like in halfway, and then that way another camera follows a different character when they're falling from down below if it's not a death pit. I think that would be also another uh, great idea. Of course, this won't work into probably certain game modes depending on what it is or the, you know, but it, it, I think that's also another uh, great idea. Now for me to move on to the next idea. The seven Koopa Kids. Now this would be beautiful if, you, if um, Mario Maker 2 had a lot more NPCs to use and a lot more different enemies for fighting. And it'd be creative if you could also add on extra objects in the background so that the, the things could be a little bit more innovative and have whole new ideas of fighting introduced to Mario Maker 2. I think this would be an awesome idea if they would introduce the, at least something with these NPCs. That would really spice things up. I think that'd be awesome to see a future update with um, them added to it and more um, objects and action and great things to do. Number four. Basically, this would be great if Nintendo could actually make Mario Maker add a huge amount of um, musics, a big music library to choose from. So if you don't want to use the default musics, you can Nintendo will give you an option to then pick one from a previous set of Mario games from a long time ago all the way up. That would be great if we had it even just, you know, different types of music for different situations. This will definitely help spice up the levels and bring more emotion to the game. I wish Nintendo would really do this one because you can get tired of hearing back the same music for the same theme background level. This would be a great add-on to um, Super Mario Maker number 2. Could you just imagine all the different themes from all the different tons of uh, games that Nintendo released over the time? It would be great to have a ton of different musics to pick from. I think this will help uh, spice up the game as well. Now on to the next idea. Here I go. Idea number 5. Having more control over the sub-maps. Now this is going to be an interesting one I want to talk about. Now basically with Mario Maker 1, when you first start the game new, you can only make up to um, 10 levels. And of course once you unlock the Dream Pipe ability to go into the sub-maps, you pretty much only have two maps, two sub-maps, um, one, I mean the map and the sub-map, so you get a total of two maps for every level, and defaultly, basically, you get ten levels to make levels with, and then, you know, you can receive stars from other people who play your level, so that way then you can access more levels that you can make in the future, and then, of course, with each level, new add-on level, that means an extra sub-map, so... How about this as an idea? How about we control how much sub maps we're allowed to use? So, defaultly, Mario Maker 1 only had a total of 
20 maps and only two per level you can make how about we can how about quality versus quantity sometimes so instead of us sometimes always being limited just to 10 shorter levels how about you know what if somebody wants to make one big long level so in this type of situation how about we control how much maps you want in a level instead and then we can upload that you know online you know for other people to play it and that way we're not using up more memory than anybody else based off of how much we're allowed to use so let's say I want to make um let's say three levels and three maps on each so you know or two levels with <laughs> two levels with 10 maps on each you know that's just an example and it also would be cool if the doors had a way of also accessing to different sub maps this will help the situation out unless we're going to be giving more drain pipes and doors to use you know, instead of it just always being drain pipes to go from this one to the other map, when we click on the drain pipe um, NPC for Mario Maker 2, how about it lets us choose um, which um, map to, you know, to have it back on or something like that, you know. You know that'd be an awesome, I think, idea. And, um, you know, we'd have more flexibility and control let's say you don't want to design 10 levels you only want to design a few levels but you want to make them really long i think this would be a more great and flexible idea first when you create the level you initially put how much maps you're going to have with that level based off of how much more left you're allowed to, to use you know like defaultly on mario maker 1 it was like 20 since we had 10 levels with an extra map on it you know so that would be awesome if we had more c control and flexibility with that and what and the th thing about um, longer levels is we're going to need a lot more than um, 500 seconds. So how about also as another thing, instead of us always just being limited to the 500, why can't we also have an option for infinity? This would definitely help us out a big time. Now I'm going to go on to um, the next idea. Um, before I go on to the next idea, I forgot one more add-on that was crucially important to this video that I don't know how I overlooked this. You see how we have the starting point and the goal point that will determine the length of our level? I know in Super Mario, Super Mario Maker 2 they now actually gave you um, a way to increase the height somewhat, but I'll let you know my idea. Okay, let's just say for every single map there is a this is this is just an example there's 64 um thousand tiles let's just say that and you know the, the smallest um map you can have would be the same size as this the minimum of which is the same size of the screen sorry my camera's losing focus so let's say with your stylus pen or you know um your hand or however you're going to control the weight the length of the level it says how the total amount of tiles and how much is left and depending on how further you stretch it here you, you'll use out all 64,000 tiles or if you stretch all the way up this way you'll use up all 64,000 um, tiles so let's say you want it to be a medium size level you could have it decently tall but not the longest or not the highest so let's say that uses up 64,000 or um, this whole, when you, sorry, I only have one hand here. Or that, the whole map's just going to be a left to right side scroller. And it's going to be a very long uh, side scroller. You know, um, and then it goes back, and then once you use up all the memory, it says, um, you know, zero tile blocks left or something. Or the other way around like this. So this way you're, you're in more control of the memory of how the block tiles work. I think this would be awesome. You can make a super long a level that goes either from top to bottom or bottom to top or left to right or right to left. Or uh, if you want to average size one, you can stretch it somewhere in the middle here until you have zero um, blocks left. I think this would be a great way to be in more control of how you initialize the size of the map. Sorry, my thing is um, out of focus. I think that would be a great idea for um, Mario Maker. That's pretty much how I design my, 
on my game levels when I make my own <laughs> my own 2D games. But I just thought that'd be a, a really um great idea. So yeah, and once again, why do we always have to start from you know left to right? How about we start from this end, you know, or this end or that end? So it'd be cool if we can also decide where are the initial let's say Mario NPC or the Luigi NPC or whatever you know that was for a split screen if they weren't at the same spot but we control exactly like there's an NPC for Mario let's just say and we click him on here so the level starts him over there instead or we click Mario over here and the level you know if we initialize the map in that direction or you know that'd be so cool if we had more control over where we initiate Mario when we start the level I think this would be an awesome super idea Okay, here's idea number six. This one's a fast one. Um, alternative secret ending. And instead of it being the regular key that Mario already uses to open up regular doors, it can be a unique different type of key that only opens up that special uh, keyhole. Or you find a treasure chest or something to end the level in a different way. Now, I think this would only benefit if you were designing a level in Mario Maker 2 for um, the story mode, you know, the build story builders mode. It, you know, to get, let's just say, extra coins or something if you can actually find the secret alternative ending. I think that also would be um, another great idea to add on to Super Mario Maker 2. Idea number seven, um, palette change. Now, this one would be a massive killer. If we can actually change the palette of um, the background levels, this would spice things up and it'll give more nostalgia, especially with the other idea I mentioned about having over like, let's say a hundred different songs or maybe even 200 different songs from a, a collection of previous Mario games. This would really help make things more exciting and never get boring in the long run. I think um, changing the palettes would be um, a super idea. Basically, it's about changing the palette, you know, of the same background, if you know what I mean. It'd be cool if we um, actually had an option to click on different sets of red green, and green, red, green, and blues on the map to change, let's say, even the upper part of the sky to the lower part of the sky so we control, or, you know, if it's the hill or whatever in the background, and then we can have it fade into the other end result point color. This would be a great way to change things and especially if we can have more options to change other individual aspects of the background or the foreground. This would be an awesome idea. I think um, this would boost up um, Mario Maker 2 to a huge degree. Oh, sorry guys, I actually screwed up. I don't know how I did this, but I, I forgot. There's this other idea I overlooked. Idea number eight. How about these other special abilities from other previous Mario games like Super Mario Bros. 3 from Super Mario Bros. You know, Super Mario Advance 4? It was a shame that, um, once again, I know Super Mario Bros. 2 wasn't a part of this, but to, um, have the digging ability and you could see the Super Mario Bros. 3 sprite doing this, that would be a great, um, thing to have. And, uh, speaking of that, what that da da da! We need to get this in Super Mario Maker 2. This is unbelievable. Just look at the abilities and the potentials with this in Super Mario Maker 2. Running up walls, putting it in a loop form, and um, actually being able to have Mario with the raccoon suit or the cape suit or whatever run in circles if they're, you know, and build up a speed that way or go up the walls and stuff. That'd be an awesome idea to add also to Super Mario Maker 2. A part of this also reminds me of Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2. Whenever the baby got the Starman on Yoshi's back and then, um, you know, baby Mario could do this. Like, it was just so amazing. Like, this needs to be added. And now for um, bonus idea number nine, which is the final, I promise. Basically, this is a bonus idea, but how about Nintendo releases a long, a very long wire cord that plugs um, your Nintendo Switch, you know, from the bottom here all the way to your um, dock station. And if 
the um, hardware is powerful enough in, in the processor. Maybe, you know, um, of course the wire would also be providing the Nintendo Switch with electricity so it had to do 1080p. So basically, it'd be cool if it could output a 1080p picture from the Switch going all the way to the dock to output it to your TV screen while at the same time maybe making a copy of that 1080 picture on that frame screen then to shrink it to a 720p here so that way you can work on both screens at the same time if you still want that old Mario Maker 1 feeling to have both screens using at the same time if you enjoy the classic way how um, Mario Maker um, 1 how you played it so that adds it up and ouch I passed the 20 minute mark line on this video Anyways, that has it for um, my, I guess, nine <laughs> um, ideas, and um, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.